everybody, welcome back to the Desmo Works channel and uh, hope you're all keeping safe at this rather odd time. So, uh, what are we going to be doing today? Unfortunately, due to the current situation, I've not been able to get any of the parts uh, delivered that I was waiting on for both the existing Thunder bike and the new one that was going to have the engine swap over. So, Luckily, I've still got enough parts to be able to now get the cases finished for the 916 engine. So today is back on the 916. Um, I'm going to be fitting the final bearings that, if you remember from the last video a couple of months back, uh, I hadn't had, but luckily I've got all those in. And I'm just going to be doing the big end bearings on the crankshaft and then we'll put the cases together uh, but this time I'm not going to use the factory method that I went through with this engine where we did all the measurements between the cases, the crankshaft and then worked out the clearances for um, pre-loading each of the bearings and, side, and putting the crank into the right position. I've got the existing shims on there which I'll put to one side and then I'm going to do it on free float method. So I'll stick the crank in. Uh, with the gearbox and then we'll just measure how much float there is that will give us the clearance that exists on the crank uh, with the cases with the new bearings and then we'll close that off by using the correct size shims he says uh, otherwise I'm going to have to order some shims as well and that will suspend where we're at at the moment so that's the plan for today let me talk through what we've got okay so if you remember when we did the cases in the previous video we were able to do all of the right hand case but on this left hand one I only able to do the main as I was waiting on a 6004 C3 which goes in there I was waiting on this um, 203 EC which goes into this gap there with that washer and then I was waiting on the main gearbox output bearing which is a uh, 6000 and where is it a 6305 C3 so that will be going into there all right the other piece that we'll be doing is I've stripped down the crankshaft just to check the bearings they're not terrible um, so this was the bottom of the right hand one and the top it's not got through to the bronze but you can see the white metal is starting to pull away um, and it was the it was the same on the left hand side one so what I'm going to be doing today is sticking new big end shell bearings in there we'll plastic gauge to ensure we've got the right clearance and then we'll talk that down ready to do the case clearances and then we've got the gearbox all sat there ready to go all cleaned so what I'm going to do first let's stick the new bearings in and then we're done with these cases for now. Okay, so let's crack on with that first. Okay, all bearings in. Just got to put the circlip in to retain that and the um, retaining plate and two bolts that hold this, this in. So we have this circlip to go in there and then we have this retaining plate that will sit in there with its two screws. Um, so what I did there is rather than using the press was just to show you that you can just use in bearing drives push these bearings in heat the cases up cool cool the bearings back I mean these literally went in the freezer for about two minutes each and then you know as you saw I heated the cases up for about a minute with direct heat around each of the you know, just circle it round so you spread the heat out and there's, there's still a little bit of heat in there and that just because these are interference fits so by just gently expanding it and gently cooling the bearing you make these so much easier to push in right let me just secure these um, two bearings in and then we'll get on to the next piece of work
Okay, bearings in the right hand case all sorted. Okay, that's, um, I won't need that collar when we go to fit the gearbox because I've got the old ones on there so I'll just leave them and they'll, they'll fit in there, okay. Um, so, all bearings fitted. And if you remember from the other cases, all done as well. Okay, let's put the cases to one side for the moment and then let's concentrate on getting the crankshaft uh, big end bearings oil clearance checked. Okay, so what we're going to do is determine the oil clearance between the big end bearings that will go in these comrods and the crank pin. But there is a bit of useful guidance that will help you get roughly in the right place. So, on your crank pin, on your comrade, sorry, it should be an inscribed letter it's B, B. Then on the crankshaft, there should be a letter, and we've got A. Now, B, A means two red big end bearings. So this is the current part number. Rosso red. So I've got four of these. What I'm going to do is carefully take these out of the packs, put them into the comrods. Okay, so now we've got the bearings in there. We need to use plastic gauge. And we're looking for a clearance. We'll be looking for a clearance between here and, well, 0 0.059. So somewhere in here or just slightly above, but not, not as squished as that. And that will give us our correct clearances. So. What I'm going to do, take a small piece of plastic gauge and gently lay it on the crank pin and then assemble the comrods over the crank pin. And then we've got to torque these down to the correct setting. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's fully torqued down. Um, angle gauge. If you don't, if you don't have one of these, it roughly is 80 newton meters for the final tighten down of these. Ooh, that leaves me knackered. So, all I've got to do now is carefully take these off. So I'm going to use an impact gun to drive these off because then hopefully I won't disturb the plastic gauge underneath. Okay, having come on, you get squish. So, oh, sorry, oh, camera's playing me up. All you do is take your plastic gauge and you can see we're about 0.4. Yeah, that's just, that's slightly tight. That's between 0.4 and 0.5. So we know that these are the correct um, bearings for the job. So let's just clean all the plastic gauge off and let's shove everything back together. Twenty new meters.
35 newton meters. Then the final Titan should be 65 degrees, but I know it to be 80 newton meters. All tightened down. Just check it's free to move. Take them out, check they're independent. Feel for any play. Jobs are good em. Okay, you see that I've just put the cases together loosely with cranking and all the gearbox and everything in because we're gonna just quickly check the end float. What I need to do is stick all the main engine bolts in. However, they're a bit dirty, so I'm just gonna give them a bit of a bougie up first. So let me just do that and then we'll get back to sticking these in. Okay, so cases of torque down, which is two stages, 19 newton meters, 25 newton meters, and then the little single one in here, which is 10 newton meters. Um, there is play. There's not play in that one, but there is play in that one. So we're likely to have to shim that down, but there's only two types of shim size for the gearbox, so. We'll see where we get to with that. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the um, alternator removal tool here. So I've got a steel surface to attach a DTI to and I'm just gonna measure how much play we've got in this crankshaft. So we'll now measure the crank float. Just make sure it's pushed right down. And then lift it up and we've got 35 or 0.35 millimeters so on here point one two right and then clutch output shaft point one three oh no oh sorry bigger point one three Okay, so end flow on both the clutch output shaft and the gearbox output shaft is between 0 0.05 millimeters and 0.15 millimeters, and we got 0 0.13 on both shafts, so all good. On the crank shaft, we've got 0 0.35 of free float. So what I'm going to do is just measure up the two shims are already on there and just see what we've got in terms of shims to put back in okay so here's the two crankshaft shims that we had and they are currently 0.75 so that would give us too much preload that would give us 0.4 preload so got 0.35 and a 0.4 so, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 too big, 0 0.35, 0 0.35. So I think these two together give us 0.65 which gives us bang on the 0.3 preload 
that the engines like to have. So now that we've got these two shim measurements, I'm gonna put the cases back together properly. So we'll pop these two shims in, we'll put the free bond around the surface and then bolt these cases together. Let's crack on with that then. And there we have it, engine cases back together. So, no inflow in there anymore. And we obviously measured these and they've stayed the same as. So, all is good. So, I'm gonna call that video a wrap here. We've put the final few bearings in and I used the drift method rather than using the hydraulic press just to show you that it can be done that way. We did the oil clearances with the new big end bearings on the crankshaft, so showed you how I use plastic gauge gain. And then we did the non-factory method of putting in the crankshaft and gears set uh, and doing their preload and free float. So it's free float stroke end float for both of the gearbox shafts and then it's preload for the crankshaft. Um, and hopefully that that made sense um, hope you enjoyed that video I don't know when the next video is going to be coming out if I'm uh, if I'm totally honest because I don't know when my parts are going to turn up that I need so they're, they're ordered fingers crossed they still turn up but obviously these are strange times uh, if you enjoyed the video chuck me a like if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please hit the button whenever it comes up in a second and please subscribe. There will be more content coming once we return to normal. And stay safe. See you in the next video. Cheers then and bye.